My name is Benjamin Bailey, and today I'm going to be teaching you the basics of color correction using GIMP. Let's go over it and grab an image. I'm going to use this one of my friend Rachel. I'm going to grab it and drag it into GIMP. Okay, now the first thing I want you to notice is that the image is very washed out. It's very blue and it makes her look too pale. What we want to do is make her face very vibrant. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the curves tool and color correct it. So I'm going to go over here, I'm going to duplicate the layer. You always want to make sure you have a duplicated layer so that you can do the color correction on this layer and have the original layer to reference back to. Okay, so let's go over to colors and to curves. Now this is the curves dialog. You can do some very complex color correction in this, but I'm just going to teach you the basics. All right, so this is called a histogram. This gray shadow, and this shows you how much pixel data is in each area. So over on this side, where this anchor is, this is where the shadows are. Over here is where the highlights are. So let me illustrate. And if you grab with the left mouse button up here, you can see that I'm changing all the highlights. All the bright spots are getting lighter. Now if I grab this anchor and move it, you can see all the dark spots are getting darker. Okay, now if you drag this up, Towards the middle, you can see that everything turns gray. And if you can continue that, you can see this gradient right here. This goes to white, and this goes all the way down there. This flips the colors. This inverts it. There's an easier way of simply inverting a color up here, down in colors, but um, using the curves channel. That is the basics of how the curve channel works. So if you just click left mouse button and click in here, you can see I added another anchor. Now you can either adjust this with your arrow keys up or down to do very minimal adjustments. You can hold down shift, which moves it in 15 pixel increments. Or like me, you can just drag it around because it's a lot quicker. So first thing we want to do is we want to increase the contrast and get rid of some of the extra pixel data. So if you grab this and you don't want this anchor anymore, you can just grab it and drag it off screen off to either left or right side of the curves channel. So what we want to do is we want to see this histogram. We want to grab this and bring this right to the base of there because there's not much information right here. It's very flat in the colors right there. So we want to grab it right here, up here at the top as well, the highlights. You can see down there it's also very flat. The histogram dies right there. So we want to bring that out to bring in the uh, colors. The other thing we want to do is we want to increase the contrast. To basically increase the contrast, you can use what's called an S curve. So I'm going to just go on the left click right here and drag this down to darken the shadows. And right here, I'm going to left click and bring this up to lighten the highlights. I'm just going to play with this a little bit, not overdo it, but give it some nice pop. Okay, as you see, that makes an S, and that gives us a little bit more contrast. Now, if we go, say, into the red channel, we can go and adjust all the colors in that channel. All the way down, gets rid of the red, all the way up, increases the red. So, if you don't like your setting, say I, I do a crazy setting right here, and I make it look terrible, then you can just hit Reset. Or say you do a big adjustment, and you want to see what the original image looks like, you can go down to Preview and toggle this checkbox. So I'm going to bring this back down to about the center. What we want to do is we want to make the face redder. Um, we want to make the image have more of a warm tone instead of such a cool tone. So I'm just going to grab this and bring it up some. I want to bring it up over here and drag this up here. Right now, the red is too powerful. Oh, it looks too powerful right now. So we have to adjust the other colors. I'm going to go down to green. We also want the green brought up some to give it more of a yellow golden look. And we want to bring the blue down because there's just too much blue in the image. Now, if you want to make the image look very realistic, you can keep it about where we have it now. As you, If you go back to the original, it looks much more natural. But I'm going to pop the colors just a little bit more to give it that vibrant look. So I'm going to bring this up a little bit more. Bring this 
up a little bit. Gonna adjust this down some. And as you can see, it looks very yellow. So I want to get oh, bring the green down just a little bit more. And there we have it, a color corrected image. You hit OK. And then if you that confirms the color correction. And since color correction is a destructive correction, then that's why we made the duplicate. So we have the, still have the original. And if you hide this by clicking on the eye, then you can see the original is all washed out. And our version, our color corrected version using curves, is much brighter, much more vibrant, and much more alive. So now you want to make sure you save your image as. You can either save it as a GIMP project file, so you can maintain the layers, which is what we'll do right now, or you could just export it to another JPEG. So we're just going to hit, um, go and call it uh, color correction, if I can spell, .xcf. That saves it as a GIMP project file. It leaves everything the highest quality, and it leaves your layers intact. And then I'm going to go up here and save as again to color correction one dot jpg for jpeg I'm going to merge the visible layers as you can see the layers this one's on top of this one this is what we can see and so we're merging them and it keeps the one on top on top and it uh, just merges the visible layers there's nothing to worry about just hit export and we want to make sure the colors are all the way the um, quality is all the way to 100 percent which means it has the least compression the least lossiness so hit save that exports the image. We go down here and we go all the way, whoosh, all the way over here, and we have our color corrected image. So using GIMP, we now have our color corrected image of our friend Rachel, and you can use this to make your photos look even better. So catch you next time. Bye.